Hey guys, it's Katie. Um, I feel like making some jewelry today. So we're going to start off, and I want to kind of do earthy tones. So I'm going to do two different blends here. I'm going to start off with a alizarin. This is just a scrap orange that I just took yellow, some red scraps, some... This is like a, it was like a dark mustard color and mixed it together, so I have no clue what color this is. It's like a dusty orange. And then again, a scrap brown that I had. And I'm going to do these three. And then I might also do these tones. So this is Primo Jungle, Turquoise, and then um, Peacock Pearl. So I might do that as one. So either way, let's start with these three. So we're going to blend these three. And now this is not going to be a full blend. It's going to be a very choppy blend. Um, because we're going to jelly roll it. So the end ones, I'm going to, these are rough squares. Well, rough squares. They're not going to be perfect. That's okay. So these ones, I'm going <laughs> to. I hate triangles. Let's see. How am I going to get this to fit together? Oh my God. Because they're not matching squares. You know what? Screw the triangle. So let's just do a Skinner drop or a, a teardrop Skinner blend. I hate doing the triangles, especially when it gets late, and that's when I usually record. And I don't, sometimes I just want a little amount, and that, I'm not going to make a perfect square. I mean, you could use some cutters, but either way, I'm just going to make these like pretty much you roll it into a ball. And this doesn't need to be perfect to get them to blend. You roll it into a ball, right? So if I show you this. And then take your hands in like a chopping motion and roll one in to get it to skinny up. Okay. And I'm gonna this one's gonna be skinnier because I have less of the alizarin than everything else. Ooh, that might be a little too long. You just roll my fingers together and that will squish it a little bit. So I think I'm gonna do orange. A little bit of alizarin and then the brown so go from light to dark and so you're going to go fat end to skinny to fat skinny to fat to skinny see what I mean so just offset your teardrops okay and then I'm gonna roll this out right now by hand because this is way too thick to put in my pasta machine so I'm gonna roll it out a little bit to get it to get skinnier or thinner, I should say. And these aren't really conditioned because when I blend this, it's going to condition it some. Now the other thing I want to do to add a little difference, I want to add some color in here. Let me roll it through the machine once so it's all one level. Like if setting, I'm just going to roll it through from here to here just to elongate it. And that way it's all one thickness, okay? And I want to add a color in here, just kind of randomly in here. So maybe we can get some weird patterns in our blend because we're not going to blend 100%. So I think maybe what I'll do is I'll take some white and roll out little strips of white and just kind of throw it here and there everywhere. It's funny because I watch Marta a lot and she's a... I think it's called Marima Small Art. And she goes here and there, everywhere. And I find myself saying that now. She does a lot of mixed media and I love watching her. I just like her accent and she's very calming. So I watch her before bed when I feel like watching mixed media. I'm just gonna add some of pieces in here. I don't know how many, just a few. Maybe we get some weird stuff going on. One or two more. And I'll probably do that with the other one too. We'll see if it shows up at all. Again, I'm not going to do a full blend on this. I'm going to do maybe five passes. Now this, these are pretty different colors, so it may take a few more than five, but let's see. So on my thickest setting, so when you fold your Skinner blend, right, if we don't have those in it, we have our colors here. 
if you put your colors vertically, we have the brown, uh, alizarin, and the orange. Put them away from you vertically. I'm sitting over here, right? You always want to fold vertically, okay? If your colors are horizontal and you fold horizontally, then you're going to have two colors. So you want to put your colors vertically away from you and fold up. And that way, on this end, we have all brown, and on this end, we have all orange. And then we're going to put the fold in first, and that way all the air is pushed out the top, okay? If you put it in this way, where your rollers go here, where one color is touching your roller, it's just going to make one blend. This would probably be an ugly brown. We want every single color touching, this is the fold, but every single color should be touching your rollers when you put it in through the machine, okay? So I'm going to put it in once. And it separated a little bit at the top, but that's okay. Just push it back together. Again, vertically away from you. Fold up. I just like to squish my sides in to keep it kind of skinny. I always do that. I know I showed you that before. Again, we're going to put it in where each color is touching the rollers. Fold first. And honestly, I might have gotten this from a video a while back, but I don't really know what video. So I doubt I, like most anything, you get this from somewhere, and I'm not sure where. I mean, I've added colors in my Skinner blend like this before, but not for the purpose I'm doing. I probably, now that I'm doing it, I've probably seen someone do it, but I don't know who. just like anything usually nothing is original anymore but if you know who did that in a video or you can think of the video that someone did that let me know because I don't remember again I'm gonna pass it again because we're starting to get a blend through here but what this is the third time oh there's a little white popping through a couple more times two more. I want it roughly blended. I don't want a nice gradient. I don't want a nice full blend. I just want it choppy. Because I'm going to swirl this or jelly roll it and I want to be able to see the different colors. So I don't want to lose our colors. Let's try that. So next what I'm going to do is cut this into strips because I want to make one long thin strip and this is how I do it. You could just fold it over but I find for me I don't trap as much air when I do this so I'm just going to cut and it doesn't matter if they're like perfectly even strips so just cut a strip, fold it over color to color. Cut a strip. Fold it over. And because it's not a full blend, it's gonna, not going to match up perfectly. You see these nice striations we got in there? That's what I was looking for, and that's what I was looking not to blend it a whole bunch of times, because I want to keep those. So now we're going to begin stretching this, because again, I want to make a nice, long, thin strip. So you can stretch it by hand, because we got to get it to fit in our pasta machine. And if I leave it that thick, it's going to really strain my gears in my pasta machine. So I'm going to roll it out some by hand. make two strips of this so when I jelly roll or spiral it I can have orange on the outside and then one with orange on the inside so maybe I'll cut this in half 
this way and make two little couple smaller ones you know so now I have two separate ones in there okay so now we're gonna run it through to make this really long and I usually start on my dark end going in the rollers first and that way if I have any pasta sludge it sticks to my dark and hopefully not to my light I'm gonna do both of that on the and get it to the thinnest usable setting I feel comfortable with and that can depend on one the time of year um, how hot it is how sticky your clay is depends how thin you can get it the thinner obviously this the nicer of a blend um, if you want it chunkier you can make it chunkier so it's gonna be up to you So this is a setting zero, obviously, and I'm going to work my way down, but I don't know if we're going to back this. Do I want to back this as well and like do a white or a black spiral in this? Ooh, I don't know. Am I going to want to spiral this alone? I think I'm going to back this once I get it. Or should I back it now and then run it through? might be easier when it's not so skinny to back it now and then to back this while it's like that maybe in some black a dark black brown maybe do I have any more brown scrap nope I don't okay let me get a color you could just use plain black I might get some brown and black and do like a black brown for this one so let me get some color you know what I think would be a good way to use this? I have some, this is one of my favorite colors, but it's in a bad material. It's Sculpey 3, it's a suede brown, and it's one of my favorite browns. But Sculpey 3 is weak, but I think it might work in this setting and not make my stuff too weak because all of this is primo, and I'm just gonna use a thin layer of this to line this so we get a swirl. But I'm also gonna add in some primo black. So I think it will be fine because that's not what the bulk of my cane is going to be made of. You know what I mean? So I'm going to use up a little of my Sculpey. So I'm going to add quite a bit of black in it. Maybe that much black. And I have, these are setting zero. I have like three sheets. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm using a wad of black and some Sculpey to get rid of it. Let me just kind of fold that up there. Sculpey 3 is so soft. I wish I really would have known because that's the only brand I can get my art store. So I still have a lot of it, but I hardly ever use it. It works well for like cabochons and thick things, but I don't even, I mean, yes, you can add, you know, say three quarters part, you know, th if you have four parts, three of them be Primo and one part Sculpey three, but I hate dealing with it. So I don't use it often, but this may be a good part. So I'm going to mix this up till I get a dark brown black. It's not going to be pure black. It's not going to be pure brown. Okay, so now I have this brown color here. But it is darker than the brown I have in my, my roll. So you will be able to see the difference between that. So I'm going to roll this out on a, thick, on a thin setting. So however bold you want, when we spiral this, if this is backed with a color, however bold you want your backing color to be, that's how thick you need it to be. So I don't want mine to be very bold. So I'm going to put, oh, there goes my roller. I'm going to roll it out on a fairly thin setting because I don't, let me see. I don't really know. I'm just kind of going for it. So let me go down. So that's a setting six right now on my atlas, so fairly thin. And right now, this is at my thickest setting. So I'm going to line this with this. So I'm just going to lay it on here, and then I'll roll this out the rest of the way. It's easier to line it now. 
And I'm just going to cut off this excess. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Now I have to remember that this is mainly Sculpey 3 on that junk one there. So I'll put it back in my Sculpey 3 binder. So now this is backed with a dark color. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. Let me roll this one out. This one again is on setting six, except for I haven't run this through on the zero, which I should. So that way it's all the same thickness. You know what looks cool? That looks really cool right there. I love when the clay does weird things like that. Okay, do the same thing with this one. Trim this one out. And then all I'm going to do is go down through my settings until I'm at the thinnest usable setting to make a roll. Or whatever setting you want to be at. If you, again, want this chunkier, well, don't go down to a thinner. Don't bring this whole thing down to the thinnest, thinnest setting. Whatever you want for your spiral to look like. And I can't tell that for you. That's going to be something you're going to have to do trial and error to see what you like. Okay, so now they're both backed. It's like crazy how soft Sculpey 3 is. Okay, so now I'm going to put it down through my settings. I kind of have to move some stuff on my desk so I can get this to stretch way out. Oh, this stupid timer keeps going off. Okay, I'm going to put this down until I get a long thread strip. I'll do both of them, and then I'll roll one up where orange starts, and I'll roll the other one up where the brown starts. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I went down to a 5, and that's about as thin as I want to go. And I have a nice long strip. And on this one, like I said, I'm going to start, and it's okay if parts are wider than other parts, that's fine. I'm going to actually cut this end off one. And I'm going to cut it kind of at an angle so we get a nice roll. So kind of it was like a 45 degree angle to my board. So we get a nice start. So I don't know if you can see that bevel there, but... Okay, and just, and again with that Sculpey 3, it's going to make it cut the outside kind of soft, but we'll make do. And I'm going to begin rolling. This one's going to be the orange on the inside. And we're going to make a jelly roll. Sample jelly roll. And then on the other one, I'm going to do the brown on the inside. So I have two different variations of the same thing. Oh, I got a little crooked there. And now my, my strip's getting a little wider. I can push on the top and make my roll a little wider. I'm going a little off skewed. Why are things not working with me today? And it's okay if it's a little skewed. Okay. And that Sculpey 3 smearing a little bit. Okay. And so with my next one, I'm going to do the same exact thing, except for I'm going to roll, instead of the orange in the middle, the brown's going to be in the middle, okay? And you can make these different thicknesses, like this was a setting 5, maybe I'll do a setting 6 or 7, or maybe I'll do a setting 4, make these widths in here bigger. You can do whatever you, whatever you want, get some variation in this. Okay, so this one I did a setting 5, I think I said. This one I did a setting 4. So the lines in between 
are going to be a little thicker. And I haven't cut into this because I definitely am going to want this to rest. But before I let it rest, I'm going to reduce. So we always start in the middle, and that way we can push air out through all of these folds. Okay? So start in the middle and begin pushing. And you want to do light pressure each time. Push and rotate. Push and rotate. You know, and you're just either using your middle fingers and your thumb or your pointer finger and your thumb. And again, you're starting in the middle. until you get like a waist or an hourglass or a barbell whatever you want to think of that and then you work up to the end and no matter what you do with reducing you're always going to get distortion okay you can always try to pulse them up if you're getting one's distorting more than the other but either way it's going to happen okay and then work up to flip it and work up to the other end and with Sculpey 3 I'm probably going to get more than I would have if I would have used some Primo but I wanted to see if I could use it. And then when you get it about even, do a gentle roll just to get it more evened off. And I don't know what size I want to do, so maybe about this size actually. Yeah, that'll be good. So let's do this one too. Ready? Using our point, starting in the middle, we're going to rotate. Just tap, 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 tap. Okay, and depending this the clay softness, each clay is going to reduce at a different level. Okay, so again, until you have a waist, and then work up to the edge. You can try to pull some of them up to the edge, but either way, that edge is going to be distorted which is fine. If you have cane caps you can use those but you know me I use a lot of my scrap colors which two of these colors were scraps so except for this one's gonna have some Sculpey 3 in it as scrap but if I mix it with another color it'll be mainly Primo. It's mainly Primo. I want them all about the same diameter this sounds a little thick still. But I don't reduce mainly by rolling. I'm just kind of evening it off. This ends a little thick. I'm going to do a little pull. Those are about the same diameter. I have a little glitter from my embossing powder the other day. Okay, so those two are done. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Thing, same exact thing with these three colors and I think I'm going to back it with the same brown because I still think that's very earthy so I'm going to do turquoise first and again they're not really conditioned but that's fine because once I blend them that will help condition them so just enough to get it into a ball and I'm definitely getting brown on this because I got this brown all over my fingers a dry baby wipe that I had sitting here that I hate to throw them away even when they're dry. So again roll and you can do a Skinner blend the regular however you want to do a Skinner blend it doesn't really matter I'm just doing it this way because when it's late and it's uh today Thursday Thursday night after work it's 7 30 it's not that late compared to how late I usually stay up I just don't feel like focusing on making triangles because for some reason I can't do the, tri the triangle thing gets me all messed up sometimes okay that's good enough as long as one end is skinnier than the other end the teardrop skinner blend will work okay and then I'm gonna go peacock next and this is an uh, accents clay so it's usually softer peacock pearl this is I think it's sculpey accents Okay. Again, thick to thin, thin to thick. So, and then this is the jungle. And then let me roll that out by hand. I won't show you all of this. I just wanted you to show you how I'm setting up the colors. And then I'll 
probably again take some white and kind of well let me roll it through once so at least it's all the same thickness on my thickest setting just to lengthen it all and it's all the same thickness okay and then I'm going to add some white in there too you could add some black some brown some really neon blue whatever you want to do I'm going to add them vertically though and you could probably add them horizontally and it wouldn't you could try it try it out I don't know, for some reason I feel like going vertical today. I have no rhyme or reason of why I'm going vertical, I'm just going vertical. Maybe we put some more in this one. I don't know, let's put a couple weird red ones. And I'm not even doing the same thickness of these strips, the same length. Okay, and then again, our lines are vertical. We're gonna fold in half, up. Our lines are still vertical, and all the colors are gonna touch the rollers. So the fold's gonna go in the rollers first, but every color is gonna be touching the rollers. Okay. There's pass one, and again, I'm putting it down in front of me, vertically. I'm gonna fold up, away from me, Okay, you have one solid color on this end, green and green. This side you have turquoise, turquoise. Okay, I'm just pushing the ends a little bit. That way they'll also get conditioned. And I'm going to put it in again, fold first. Each color is touching my rollers. I'm going on my thickest setting. And that was the second pass. Oh, there's a big bright spot of white. I'm pushing my ends again. And I'm just pushing in my sides to keep it a skinny strip so it's, for me, easier to fold. You don't need to push in these sides. If you don't push in the sides, your strip's just going to get longer. Your fold's going to get longer this way, and you're going to have less to fold up. So I think that was the third pass, and you can see the white in here. My clay is starting to get more condition. It's less crumbly. There's the fourth pass. Maybe we just do one more. There's the fifth pass. Yeah, let's leave it like that. So again, maybe we'll chop it in half this way rather than do it the other. No, let's just cut it in strips. Why not? We'll do the same exact way we did it. Because I do want two of these two so I can have the light on the inside and then again the dark on the inside. I always do this when I'm trying to get a long thin strip. I always cut and fold. Some people are cut and stack. Some people fold it, but I, for me, I trap a lot of air when I fold it over. So that doesn't quite work well for me and I know it doesn't, so that's why I do this. And look, this time we have more white through there, which is kind of neat, huh? So again, we're gonna stretch this out a little bit because it's way too thick to stick through my pasta machine <clears throat> and maybe right now well let me roll it out a little bit more and then we'll cut it in half so I have two separate ones that's kind of cool it looks super pretty through there. Cut it in half roughly. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. Ok, 
Okay. And then let's put these through on zero so they're the same thickness. Okay. And then again, I'm going to take this clay, align it, get it out on a thin sheet. Sheet. One of them I'll roll up with the light on the middle. The other one I'll roll up with the dark on the middle. Okay. Same exact thing I just did. Okay, I'm laughing. <laughs> Oh, I'm such a dummy, guys. I just wanted to show you this so you know why I have less of this color. And I can totally remake it easily, but I don't think I'm going to. So I was running it through all my thinnest setting. I was down to setting 7, and I dropped this, and I have a motor on my machine, and it sucked it right in. <laughs> I mean, this part's still a blend here. I could use up till here and make a jelly roll up to here. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh god how dumb so my thought was okay so let's see what this one looks like if I just use up to there I don't have the lightest color I have some of the peacock in the green so I think I'll keep that but I want the lightest color so I think I'm going to cut that let me roll this through on the thickest I can't believe I <laughs> That's what happens when you have a motor and it's just going. And I was watching TV and I was like not really looking and it slipped out of my fingers. You know, because it's on a setting seven. So I was like holding it gently and it like all fell out of my hand and then went just went <laughs> to the. Uh, let me get rid of some of this extra bound. It went right in the rollers. And because I wasn't hand rolling it, I couldn't stop it fast enough. <laughs> Oh well. So e either way, I could take this and cut this in half, which is what I think I'm going to do. And I'll have a really long, th thin, skinny, skinny, skinny strip. Because I do want two of the colors. So I'm going to cut this in half and use these. Okay? And I'll make this a scrap. This will actually probably turn out to be like a blue toned brown actually won't be a bad scrap okay let me finish what I was doing okay so now I have these and they're gonna be harder to reduce because they're pretty skinny so I'm just gonna do the same thing we did again just going really slowly obviously there's not gonna be as much as I wanted it's just gonna be the way it is but we'll make it work and I can always redo it too you know it's not a big deal so don't beat yourself up if things don't always work out. We're human. We make mistakes. Just go for it. And you know what? I still got a good jelly roll out of there. Now because this is Sculpey 3, I really, really, really should let this rest before I cut into it. But I kind of want to show you, see the pattern if we can see it at all. If it smears too much, it smears too much. Really the only reason why I'm reducing them is one, to get them all about the same size, and two, to push out any air. Which if you can fold it really tightly, even when you're fan folding or whatever, then you shouldn't have a lot of air, but again, we're human, so we don't always do that. So these colors, I do want the same size as well. They might not be the same size as my other one that I had, but I want it the same, these guys roughly the same thickness. As each other. You, I mean, you don't need to. You can have one fatter, one skinnier. You don't need to. I was just going to make those. And then this is that scrap one, which I'll keep. Reduce it just a little bit. I was trying to do that extruder technique where you get the edges cracking and I couldn't get it to crack a lot and I even leached my clay 
these clays all night and you saw how that dry they were before I had conditioned them they were hardly sticky and I still couldn't get the edges to crack enough so I don't know I'm gonna have to play with that so let's cut into these let's cut into my orange ones first because they've been sitting the longest even though they've only been sitting like 10 minutes not even just clean my blade let's see what we got for these orange ones okay so we got that one there and again because I did my brown really thin this looks really small and in person I can see the difference between the brown the two browns my fiance's home so the dogs might go a little crazy upstairs I don't know if you can see that but I can see it okay in person at least you can so there's that one let's do this one this one should have the dark on the inside there's still a little distortion there so you can see the differences between the brown and then the brown black that we lined it with Okay, and then let's do these guys again there's still some distortion I didn't cut all the way through the distortion so that one's with the green on the inside this one should be with the turquoise on the inside And again, when we get in more, you won't have this distortion. That's still distortion. Okay, and then we have these two. Okay, and let's cut this last one. This is the one I messed up on. So this one just has pretty much two colors in it. Compared to these having three. So it's really whatever you want. Okay? So there we go. And keep all your scraps. Don't ever get rid of your scraps. Scraps are good things. So I'll mix these up and then I'll probably mix these up. This is like, I'll put that in here. And there we go. Now we have some of this scrap and I'll put this with this and we have some of this scrap. And mainly it's Primo. Okay, this one is definitely still more sculpty through the one I added the black with. But these other ones now are mainly Primo. So if I mix it with more Primo, it will be fine. Okay, I'm going to let these rest before we do the project. And actually, i got to cut these ends off too. Um, and that way I can mix them in with my other, my other batch. So that will go in the orange and brown ones. These obviously got more distortion because it's hard to reduce them that when they're that skinny. Yes, Josh. Sorry. And there's those three. So a happy mistake on this one. Looks fine. So don't just get frustrated and chuck everything, you know, always. Just know that things can work out fine. Okay? So I'll let these rest. And tomorrow, um, let me mix these guys up too to see what kind of scrap color we come up with. And I'll show you that quick. And then tomorrow we'll do a project with these, I think. I want to do a pretty simple, easy project just because I feel like it. Doesn't that look cool for mixing my scraps together those end canes I love when it looks like does weird things that you wouldn't expect it to I, I love that I do
love when it kind of mismatches in a certain way. See, and now for mixing these scraps up separately, we have, this is very similar to that jungle color except for more of a blue undertone, and we have a brown that's got kind of a red undertone. So I'll use these in different projects later. I mean, that's what I did today. I had a brown and I had an orange that I had mixed colors that I thought would mix well together and did them. So don't ever junk your scraps. I mean, these are two new colors, you know, that why wouldn't they work? You know, I could make a whole project out of these two if I wanted to. So don't ever get rid of them, okay? So we have the jelly rolls that we made together, and then I made a couple of more when I made a cane out of these, so I had um, another kind of couple bright, so I just did more of a yellow with the scrap brown and the scrap green I had. So I just added a couple more to the repertoire of the ones I have. So now I'm going to make a veneer out of these. Now in this case, I am going to have my veneer thin. I did get a Lucy Clay slicer, and someone keeps asking me to show how it works. It's very self-explanatory. Um, there is a video on the polymer, uh, Cindy Leach has it, on Polymer Clay Tutor of how to use it, and that's kind of where I watched it. It's very difficult for me to record this. Um, so, I guess I can show you a few slices. So it has a thing that way back here, again, I can't really show you this. There's a thing way in the back here that you screw. I wrote on it forward and then a B for backwards so I know which way I'm tightening it. I also drew a blue line on it right there so I know when I do one full turn. Um, so pretty much there's this back stop down here and that's what stops the cane from going to your blade. You see this is really hard to show. I don't... I don't know what they wanted to see, so let me get it a little closer. Well, let me use one of my long ones. Now, I kind of wish I didn't try to use up some of my Sculpey 3 because it is really soft and it's kind of a pain in the butt to work with. And I kind of just wish I just was like, screw it, and just left it without Sculpey 3. I'm trying to use it up, but it's so soft, I really don't like using it up. And I'm going to eventually say, just whatever, I'm done with it and just chuck it. But. I don't like chucking things so it's still sitting there. But I gotta stop using it, especially in canes. So the first couple of slices never really work out well. Just so you know. Because it has to get it even. The other thing is, is if you roll your cane on this, I found, then your next slice is not even even to keep your cane round. So because this is a softer cane it does distort some but I'm not gonna roll it so all you do is literally push down so that's not still not touching it so I'm gonna go forward a couple of turns just to get it to at least cut through it it's pretty much all you do I'm not quite sure you cut it like you would cut a blade with a blade you're just cutting it with this and I'm doing one full turn from my blue line that I have and that's the thickness I'm going to do. Okay, now be, again because it's Sculpey 3 it's distorting some but when I roll it, okay, so say I roll it like you would if you were cutting with a regular blade, your next slice won't be nice. So if I go forward one turn, it's going to be way thicker because it has to reset itself. See that's not an even slice. So I'm finding if I roll it, I'm going to waste more than if I just let it distort some. Whereas if you were doing it by hand, you would roll it. So they're nice thin slices, okay? So I don't know what else to show. It's Again, it's really big and it's kind of hard to show on camera. All you do is just bring it up, bring it down, bring it up, bring it down. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to cut a bunch of each and when I'm done I will be back. Just saying this because someone just commented on this today. Uh, I was chopping something and I was talking and they were afraid I was going to do something. I'm using my dullest blade. Literally dull blade. That's the blade side. It is so dull 
I'm not going to hurt myself with this blade. <laughs> okay? So even if I cut myself, it's not the end of the world. I'm not going to die from a blade cut. Just so you know. So either way, you might see blood for a second if I ever do, which I haven't yet. I've only once cut myself, and that was taking this blade out of the box the first day I ever opened a clay blade. Since I haven't. I probably will at some point, but oh well. You know, I do injections every day in a one inch, well, your mouth can only open about one to two inches wide on like the biggest opening. So I have to stick a needle in there and not hit their lips or their tongue. I think I can handle a blade. Okay. Anyways, next thing I have, I have Kemper cutters here. And you can use any circle cutters. These would work as well, these type. Any kind of clay cutters you have. And I have one about the size of my biggest circle and I have one about the size of my smaller circles. Okay, so if you only have one size circle, then get whatever size cutter would match that. Um, the other thing I have is a tile, because I can then, when I get it all on, I can move my tile, which is why I'm gonna do it on a separate tile. It's just easier for me when I'm recording here. And I wish I could have showed that Lucy Clay Slicer, but I can't hold my phone in my hand and slice and do everything at once and this stand that I have doesn't move that far away from what I'm working on so unfortunately the the Lucy clay slicers work great but they're big so it's hard to record it okay so anyways we're gonna start making a veneer with these and uh, you know depending on how thin you made your um, sheet when you we made that long thin strip will depend how thick or thin your spirals are so let's see, which one of my ones with the thinnest spirals? This one here, and then where's one with one of the thickest? Is it this guy? So if you look at these two, these are chunkier, and that one's finer spirals. That will depend on how thick or thin you made that long strip. Okay, if you make it thicker, you're gonna have chunkier spirals. If you make it thinner, you're gonna have thinner spirals. Okay, so let me move you over here a little bit and we're just gonna literally begin laying these on. And again, they're not perfectly round, that's okay. I'm okay with that. If you want them perfectly round, make them perfectly round, but I'm okay with them not being perfectly round. So I'm gonna lay one of those on there and then I'm going to decide what I'm going to put next to it. And I'm probably going to go with a dark because this is a light outside. I'm probably going to go with a dark outside one next. Probably, maybe let's go this one. So this is a smaller circle. So what I'm going to do, right? Yeah, about that, that size is to make these fit together rather than overlapping them. So they distort a lot. I'm going to cut a portion of this out. Let's say... And you can cut out a part you don't like. Like if something's not perfectly round. Well, maybe I won't go with it. Yeah, I'll go with this one, whatever. Let's do it. See? Just cut a part out. And that plunger doesn't even really hit it, so. Keep those scraps, because we're going to use those later as our base. And then just fit your little piece in there just like that okay so we'll do another one um, <laughs> might go with one of those so let's cut this guy out again keep those scraps I'm gonna go with one of these guys I'm gonna find the most round part the less distorted part to stick in there because the other parts I may cut off and again, I really wish I hadn't tried to use up some of my Sculpey 3, just because it's, it's not worth the... I'm like, oh, I'll try to use it up, but it smears so much. See, it already smeared. I mean, that will probably come off when I sand it, but you know what I mean? It's just so soft, it's not even worth trying to use it up. It's not worth putting in all the effort to go, wow, that made it really brittle, or wow. You know, it's okay if you do, you know, like two parts of one clay to one... Part, Sculpey 3, I guess it makes it stronger, people have said, but it may, it also changes the consistency of your clay as well, so I don't know, it's just not my forte. I'm going to use my bigger cutter because I'm going to use one of these brown ones next. And I'm going to put it more over here. 
gonna use one of these. Just gonna set it all in there, squish it into place. And we're gonna burnish it later, but for now, just kind of set it into place. And these are very earthy colors. I mean, you can do whatever colors you want. My initial thought, what I wanted to do initially was the um, extruder one where you spiral it and get it to crack. And I tried that and mine wouldn't, my clay wouldn't crack. So I leached it for a day thinking, okay, that will dry it out. Nope, still didn't crack. So I'm going to be playing around with that to see if I can get it to crack for myself. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm off camera. So I'm going to be playing with that because I, I really like the way those little extruder ones look, but I can't seem to get it to crack well enough. So I'm going to have to play with my clays to see what clay I can get to crack. Because even after literally sitting there for a day on a piece of paper and I flipped it in the morning. Oh, is that one going to fit? Nope. So that cutter's a little big for that one. Let me try a slightly bigger one. All my hands in the way, but these are all very thin. There we go. So I need a smaller one to fit both that one there. Is that the next size down? Yep, that's about the size of that one. <laughs> I really want to do that technique. It's a super cute technique, but again, I got to figure out what's going to work for me with my clays that I already have. I'm thinking I'm going to use some of my Kato because my Kato is really, really crumbly, so I'm thinking that might work. But I wanted to do these earthy colors in that, was my what I was planning on. <laughs> So I'm just kind of, you know, if I have a dark ring on the outside, I'm trying to put a light one there. If I have a light ring on the outside, I'm trying to put a dark one there. I'm just trying to make it so I don't put, hopefully, two darks. Like, this is two darks, you know. I mean, I'm going to get that because I don't have a perfect amount of each, but that's okay. Let me put one of these over here somewhere. Up in there like that. And you can lay it on and see where you need to cut it out, you know, say, oh, I like it like that, or I like it more here, or I like it more there. You know, so you can definitely lay it on there and see what way you like it more. And again, if you don't need this, go ahead and fast forward. And if you like to watch people craft, which a lot of you guys do, then you're watching me craft. I won't rec I won't have you watch me do this whole sheet, but I was just going to do a few. And I just am taking a silicone tool and kind of scrunching it in where I need to. If anywhere is looking goofy. And now they're all fitting together and they're all to finger touch because I use that Lucy Clay Slicer. They're all about the same height and they're all kind of fitting in there nicely together because we're using a cutter. Um, what am I going to do next? I kind of want to, I like this turquoisey one. It's one of my favorite ones, which I think I'm going to put him in here somewhere. But again, keep, well, obviously you're going to keep those scraps. You're not going to throw them out. But that's what I'll use to put this on in a minute. Either to put it on in a minute, or I might just put it on a color and use that for the backing later. Because I did back this one. I already did one of these, which is upstairs. That's why I didn't show, oh, I have a bug on my fruit fly. Um, which is why I didn't show it to you yet. Uh, but I showed it on my Facebook page and people liked it and asked if I was going to show it, so I figured I'd show you. I had recorded making the jelly rolls, but I wasn't sure if I was going to actually make a video on this. 
Okay, so I'm just going to keep laying them on however I want to, no particular order, until I have a nice big sheet here. And I will be back when that's done. Okay, so I still have some left, but here's what I got so far, and that should be big enough for my cutter. The next thing I want to do before we mess with that is to get some kind of background for this to go on. So I'm going to take all these little pieces, and on just a little bit of this scrap brown I had, I'm going to take all these little pieces, because they make a cool pattern once stretched out, but I still think I'm going to back this separately, so that doesn't really matter. And I think on the backing I'll probably just smoosh the rest of these guys in. And I'm just going to roll this out onto a fairly thin setting because I don't, I'm going to put on another backing as well. But these look cool when they're kind of smushed out like that. They make a really cool design. But either way, we just need something to lay that on because it is still pieces. So what we're going to do next, let me, hang on, let me see if I can move some stuff so I can get working in a better area for the camera. Is we need to burnish this guy so all the pieces aren't separate. So I'm going to take a piece of wax paper, parchment, deli paper, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to burnish this with my finger. Now because we put the cutters and they're not all laying on top of each other, they shouldn't distort that much. But as you know with me, with polymer clay, I'm okay with a little distortion. I'm okay with things not being perfect. They are handmade and I want them to look handmade. So I'm just going to Kind of burnish them all together until they're all flat on here. You could use your roller or whatever. And then I am going to roll it very lightly. I'm like not putting any pressure. I'm just going to roll it a little bit. And I'm not rolling off the ends of it because your ends will begin to flatten the edges out more. So just roll to the end. And again, I'm like not, I'm just barely touching this thing. Like literally just barely touching it. I'm going from all different directions because I don't want to distort it too much. And I am going to put this in the pasta machine once we get it on that back I just made. Just to kind of stretch it out just a little bit. Make sure it's all one even layer. You don't need to though. You could just do it by hand like this. Put it on a backing. Call it done. But I want to stretch it a little bit. That will be more apt to distort it, but I'm, I want it to stretch it a little bit. I don't want it to be so perfectly perfect. See? So that's what we're dealing with right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is pick this up. Be careful because it's not all whole. It's still pieces. I'm going to take this little piece of scrap that we had and I'll lay it against my tile, push out any air from underneath it. So I don't tend to bake on paper, plus I plan on doing a separate back for this, possibly. I don't know. Some, a lot of times I don't. And I'm going to lay this on here, again trying not to get any air in between the two layers. I'm going to take my wax paper again and just kind of gently burnish it onto that and then I'm going to roll it through my pasta machine. I'm going to pick the whole thing up. Okay. And then I am going to put the wax paper on top of it just to make sure I don't get anything on it. And I'm going to roll it through my pasta machine. Just, I'm going to roll it through, I don't know how thick this is right now. This backing was a six. Okay, this this part with the scrap on it, this is rolled out to a six. So it's probably, and these weren't cut very thick, so it's probably at a five. So whatever thickness it catches on in your pasta machine, you want to put it in one way and then go down one setting and put it in the other way. Okay. 
So maybe I'll start at a four and see if that's even enough. So that was a four, and I'm gonna flip it. Okay, and this will have stretched it, but that's again what I was kind of looking for. I was looking for it to get a little stretched out. And that line right there is from my uh, deli paper. Had a little crease in it. Okay, so now I'm going to lay it back on my tile. I kind of wanted it a little wonky. That's why I stretched, that's why I said I was going to stretch it out, because I didn't want it to be like perfectly round circles. I don't know, I think it just adds a little bit of character, character to it. But if you wanted it perfectly round circles, just leave them perfectly round circles. I mean, that's all about your own creativity. Okay, then I'm going to grab my cutters. I'm quite excited because I got some new cutters from Metal Clay Studio. Um, on Etsy and I got some new shapes and they did these sizes for me so I think I asked them for a one one and a half and two inches I believe and I got these new new shapes that actually might be a cool shape right there for this it just might be fun I have one I already did in this shape here Oops. I just dropped one Maybe a fun shape too. I don't know. Let's see. That could be a fun shape for this. I wish I didn't. My deli paper didn't just crease that that much. I would sand that out though. And this is a tile I'm going to bake on, so once I cut this, I don't have to move it. But I also, this shape might look, might be fun. Is that too long though? This is the longest one I have. I don't know, or would I lose a lot of the whole thing, you know, because it's too skinny. Oh, these, I thought these were dog hairs. They're just pieces of plastic. That's weird. So anyways, just figure out where you want this or where you like it the best. Uh, let me figure this out off camera. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with something like that. So then you just press down, obviously. And I've gotten their cutters, and they come in all different colors, too. I have pink ones, orange ones, white ones, um, blue, this color now. I have all different... They come in different colors, which is kind of fun. Um, and they'll make whatever size you want so usually they have a set that you're supposed to get and rather than get like five and I'm not going to use like they get really small and really big I'm like hey can you just make these three sizes for me that's all I need and they do because um, in their description they said they can make any size and they will and it's it's really handy and nice and um, they have all kinds of shapes and sizes and they stack nicely and they clean nicely so I like them again it's from Metal Clay Studio um, on Etsy so I'm going to keep this because 
I may use this to back and I also have like if I was to roll this out What I might do with this, while we're on camera still, I have all these scraps, so I might just take all these scraps, and I don't care if they're distorted, it's just going to be the backing, and just lay all these guys on. They're not really scraps, but they're extra pieces that I don't plan on using right at the moment, and I still have plenty of cane left, so I'm just going to lay them on here. should give me enough clay to back this guy when he's out of the oven. And I have all these miscut pieces too. Run this through my machine. See? And we got like a neat looking backing too. And if you want it to stretch even more, see how that's even really stretched? That might look cool for the back. So if I fold it over, let's do it again. And that's even stretched even more. And I actually quite like that. Isn't that cool when you stretch it out? Like, just play with things, you know, because you may come up with something really interesting. Like, honestly, I might cut myself a piece out of that. Let me go one more time in the opposite direction. I actually could see myself wearing a pendant like that. I think that looks cool. I like that. <laughs> So for my scraps, I'm going to make a piece out of it, a pendant, right? Why not, right? So I didn't do anything super fancy out of that. And I'm, I was going to just use it for backing, but you know what? I actually quite like it like that. It might look cool in a pendant. like that. Alright, that might look cool. It's not perfect, you know, but hey, once it's sanded down a little bit and resined, and then I still have all of this that we can back with. I mean, look how different you can get things to look. So even if you're not thrilled with something, just keep going. Keep going because you may end up with something cool. I don't even know what this back, this back probably looks like something too. So we'll bake it and see what we think. And I'm not getting rid of any of these loose scraps around the edges here, um, these little jaggedy pieces from a plastic cutter because I'll just buff those off real fast with my Dremel. That will take me like a half a second. So I'd rather leave them. Oh, my dog's snoring and over there, and you can hear him yelping. I do want to say, someone else said, what's that background noise? I live in a house with other people, well, with my fiancé and my two dogs. I do allow them to come in the basement with me, right, because they're my dogs. Um, if I were to lock them upstairs, they'd probably howl so loud that it would be more distracting. So if you hear something chewing on a bone or playing or fighting, like those are my dogs. They don't fight, but they wrestle. Um, my fiance also comes down here. So it, 
if he's down here, he may be listening to a podcast in the background. He does turn it down quite a bit for me, but I'm not going to be like, because this is the only place in the house we smoke. He can smoke is in the basement. So I'm not going to be like, sorry, you can't smoke for two hours because I'm recording a video for people. Unfortunately, it is what it is. So if you hear other things in the background, it's usually, or my washer, my, um, my house, my uh, ch -ch 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 bathroom where our washer and dryer is for now. It eventually will come down here in the basement. But for now, um, we have a stand-up shower and we're going to eventually put in a regular bathtub. Um, but we don't have kids, so we don't need a regular bathtub. So for now, our washer and dryer is up there. And it's right above me, so you may hear the washer and dryer go as well. I'm human. I have stuff to do as well other than just make videos all day. I need to... Uh, get stuff done for the work week and stuff so if you hear things it's just the normal house stuff I'm not in a soundproof room in my own little studio I'm in our basement kind of is what it is okay so I'm going to get these in the oven in the oven I will take a piece of non-wax parchment or tin foil or whatever you use these are going to stay on the tile like this all I do is put them in the oven just like that I throw this right on top just and I'm going to bake it at 275 and because I'm going to back these separately, I'm only going to bake these for about 35 minutes. And then I'll come back, we'll put the backs on, and then I'll bake it for another probably 50 minutes. Always the last bake I like to do for a good almost hour, just because they're stronger. But if you're going to do multiple bakes, just get it hard enough. I mean, you could use your heat gun, but I don't like risking it with the heat gun because it makes it like really fragile, like really fragile. So you could use a heat gun, but I'm not going to. To set these I'm just gonna put them in for 30 minutes you know I'll watch a one of my shows it's what 9 30 on Saturday night so I'll watch a movie or something and when that's done I'll come back I may even come back tomorrow we'll see okay so here's the one I made the other day when the canes were fresh which I definitely have more distortion here's the one we did today it's the first one we did and that was that back there so that one I'm going to back. This is that second one I did. And that's the back of that one. Which I'm going to back this one as well. And then when I was rolling this out a little bit thinner. That scrap that I cut this one from. I got a really cool pattern here. It kind of faded out. So I cut out a third one. And that I think is fine for the back. Right? It could be reversible. So when I sand it down. You know, I got to be careful. My nails are still wet. I just did them. Um, so these two I'm going to leave these two I'm going to back so <clears throat> I have this piece here and say I needed this piece right and I have all this cane left honestly let's see let's see what we could come up with with just this scrap here I bet you just by slicing some weird chunks off here because I don't know what else I'd do with these honestly and if I need more I'll just remake it let's just slice some pieces off you know so say you didn't have a bunch of scrap circles, right? Just take some scrap colored clay, cut some of your, they don't need to be perfect either. I don't really care if they're perfect. Overlap them, do whatever you want. Did I already do that one? Yes. I already did that one, that one. Right, so you could, I mean, just enjoy the fact of putting them together. The backs don't need to look perfect. They can if you want. They don't need to. So whatever, whatever you want to do. So then just layer some of these on here. They can overlap. They can do whatever you want. Maybe I want the orange on top. Right? So stick them on like that. You can give them a little push down if you want. And then run it through your pasta machine. And just take it down as stretched out as you want it. And then what I did when I got this one is I just kept stretching it. So I folded it in half.
and just keep stretching it out you know so you can get some pretty cool looking things by playing with that I love it I keep every time I do it I'm like that would make a pretty pendant every time every time I've been doing that with the scraps I'm like that would be pretty that would be pretty you know so have fun okay so all we're gonna need is some liquid clay first I'm just gonna take my blade take my really dull blade and just kind of scrape off these scraggly edges there just I don't want to get it on my clay but I'm gonna do it over here just okay so I'm gonna do that off camera really really fast we can deal with trimming up the edges more later when the back's on But even if you made a sheet from those cut pieces that I did, like this here, those would look awesome too if you had a whole sheet of those. I think that would look cool too. You know? So if you want to use perfectly black clay or beautiful brown clay, you know, fresh clay for your backings, you can. Um, I just don't like to waste pure clay for a backing. I would rather use something I already have which you guys know if you watch any of my other tutorials so I, I like this side best so I'm going to use this side so I'm going to put it face down on this guy I'm going to this is going to be the back so I'm going to apply a little bacon bond to my pendant not to the clay to my pendant just a little bit you don't want a lot but you want enough to make it a little sticky Make sure you get your edge as well. Just spread it around with your finger, or you could use a brush if you want to use a brush. Go ahead. It's really hard to get it out of liquid clay, liquid clay out of your brush, but if you have a designated brush for it, lay it on. And I doubt my cutter is going to fit there again, so I'm just going to lay it on like this. And you could texture it. So the one I made the other day, I did texture, and it was it has had the same kind of backing on, but you got rid like this texture I think kind of distorted the backing some so I'm not going to texture this one this one I'm just going to leave smooth so pretty much all I'm going to do now is just roughly trim the excess I can do better later once I pick it up let me just get some of this excess cut Okay. pick it up make sure it's smoothed on really nice there's no air bubbles between it and your pendant. And take your blade, and again, this is my crazy, crazy dull blade, and I really have to sharpen it. I've just been lazy. And I have a nicer blade that I can use for other things. Um, for stuff I really need a sharp blade for, but I'm dragging this along already baked clay, so it doesn't need to be super, super sharp. Okay. And I'm going to trim this side later as well with my Dremel, which I'll show you how to do. And I've showed you many times, but I'll show it just in case no one else has, someone hasn't watched my old tutorial, or older tutorials, I should say. And then just kind of make sure it's fully covered on your piece. Okay. Again, don't ever get rid of your scraps. You can use that, mix that up, and that will be a brown. I usually take a piece of parchment, a smaller piece here, smooth that out some, and then when I do do backings, I, I tend to stamp in my name. It's also good to do the state you're in, your state initials, because that will be, you know, and this could be a front or a back, really. So I might not actually put my initials in this. So I could see myself wearing it this way, or that way. So I actually, I'm not going to put my initials on this at all. Just make sure your edges are stuck. Okay, and I'm just going to lay that on my tile. Mm -hmm -hmm. I don't have any more paper. I'm out of paper. I'll have to get it upstairs. Okay, anyways, done with that. So now we'll do this one, same exact thing. So find a spot you like. This spot's kind of cool right there. Yeah, 
one should fit. Okay. So find a spot you like. Again, a little liquid clay. Spread around. Now people are always like at work, like, oh, your nails are so, you did them so good. How do you keep it from getting a mess? Every time I paint my nails, they look like this. After I get out of the shower, when I'm in the shower, towards the end of my shower, I'll just take my nail and the excess peels off like nothing. Um, so I usually clean my nails up when I'm in the shower. And the nail polish comes off really easy. Say you take a 15 minute shower, right before you get out, after doing all of your stuff, just drag your finger along and the nail polish, the excess will peel right off. I don't spend extra time cleaning up the excess. Which, when I come back tomorrow, you'll see that. Because it's 11 o'clock. You know what I'm doing? What I was doing while I was doing my nails? I was watching a Christmas movie on Lifetime. <laughs> they already have the holiday movies out which I love Christmas and it is Halloween next week <laughs> and I'm already they're already playing them and I'm watching them because they're all like those love movies you know they have, they're like love movies I really like these colors they're very like autumn warm homey earthy kind of colors Okay, and again, it doesn't need to be perfect because we'll trim it up later. Just get most of the excess off. And take a piece of parchment as well. Another piece, just get my fingerprints out of it. Make sure all the air is pushed out, which is why I'm going from the middle to the edges usually. And then rub it out. look around and make sure your edges are all connected and again this could be worn this way or this way you know oh, there's a little indent there let me smooth that out so I probably won't put my initials on this either just because it could be worn both ways really you know, it could be worn like that or that, depending on what you're looking for for a design. You know, same as that one. This one, what I did, and I'll show you just to know, this one I used some stamps on it. I used a sponge and textured it, and then I have stamps. So I got these at Michael's. They're in the $1 bin, like, by checkout. <clears throat> and I usually do my name Katie G and then usually I'll do or my full name Katie Gordon and VT so that's how I usually do it this I tried out that new set I got with the cursive but I think it works well for lowercase but the K doesn't look that great but anyways okay so I will bake these for at least probably 50 minutes um, covered and I'm probably, which I don't do often, going to put it on a piece of paper. I don't think this is waxed. No, I don't think this is waxed. I actually could put it on this. So if I put this down, try not to get it on a crease. And that way... It's not really for shiny spots, but hopefully it will uh, make it so both sides look good. And they're a little more even. And I will actually what I'll probably do is bake it with with the raw side up and the already baked side like that. Okay, so I'll bake these, and when these are done, we will be back. So all of my pieces have baked and are out of the oven, obviously. This is the same one you saw. And there's that one that we backed. And there's, this was the first one I made. And there's this one. 
So now I'm just going to sand them down. And because I plan on resining, I'm not going to sand that crazy. But I am going to use my new scale sander that I showed you guys in the bowl video. Um, I'm probably only go, going to go 800, 1,000, 1,500, maybe up to 2,000 or 3,000. Really, how much you do is up to you. And you can sand these by hand, but I like this thing that I just got here. It's pretty handy. I don't have to stick my hand in water at all, which is nice for my hands. It's got the dust filter here, which definitely sucks up all the dust from the bowls is what the red's from. And so all I'm going to do is sand these. I'll show you a little bit on one quickly. It is kind of loud, so if you want to turn this down a little bit, I would do that now. So I will do both sides, and I'll decide later if I'm going to resin both sides. I probably will on the ones that can be reversible. I'll probably resin both sides. So ready? Turn this down. So I'll keep going up through the grits with that and keep sanding all of them. And then when I'm done sanding, I'll be back, you know, and sand whatever grits you're happy up to where you're happy. Um, yeah, you know, that's depending on how you're going to finish it. I mean, if you're not going to resin, you might want to get a high shine. Um, so that's up to you. So I'm going to keep sanding these and when they're all sanded, I will be back. So at this point, they're all sanded and buffed, and they don't need to be perfect, you know, like little divots and stuff, because I'm going to resin them. Um, if you're not going to resin, you know, definitely make sure when you make them, you make them super smooth. So there's the back, there's the front, there's one side, there's one side, and then here's one side of this one. And then this one has this side. So this is the only one I haven't buffed. I've sanded, but I haven't buffed it. So I'm going to show you how I buff. I use my Dremel. I have a Dremel 4000 that I got off of Amazon. And it was um, a refurbished or reconditioned one. I generally, when I'm buffing, only buff around speed 15. Um, this one has variable speeds, which I like, rather than a high-low. Um, because I found on the high-low ones, the high is really high and the low is a little too low. Um, there's a lock button right here, and that's how you control opening and closing your chuck. So if you hold the lock button, you can loosen it and put your bit in and out. And if you keep your finger on the lock button, you can tighten it. Give it a little tug and it's locked in there. So again, I'm going to buff around speed 15. I have these two buffing wheels that I generally use. Um, I just broke out some new ones. So generally my last ones lasted about six months. So again, I have those on my Amazon as well. So I'm going to start with the orange one because it is a little more coarse and just run it over it. And I might go a little higher than that. But go with whatever speed you're comfortable with. Also going to smooth the edges with this. And you could smear the edges with some clay or paint the edges if you want. I'm just going to leave them. Because again, these will be for me. To wear. And I've had people ask, why do you sand and buff if you're just going to resin? Because I, I find it does look better after it's resin, but again, that's, that's your choice. That's your call. I don't worry about getting every little lump and bump out of the clay because I'm going to resin when I'm sanding or when I'm, before I'm baking the clay, I don't worry about getting every little bump and lump out, but if you're not going to resin, I would.
if there's a little indent right there. Again, you won't notice that with resin. Nope, I should have let it stop on its own rather than hit the lock button. Turn it up just a hair. This is the finer one. Oops. Yeah. Flung that across the room. So that's all I'm going to do for the the buffing. Is that in my clay? That little white spot. And I found a spot on the on one of them. You see that little white stripe right there? That's where we added the white clay into the jelly roll. Now the Sculpey 3 definitely does not buff up very well and that's where you'll get it seems like it's more porous so it definitely I can see where the stripes are because they don't they don't buff up as smoothly. You can see the little white dots wherever the Sculpey 3 is like that's how it always does for me. So I should just not even use it anymore. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is UV resin these. Um, I have a video on UV resining, so I'm not going to show it, but I'll show you them when they're done. I probably won't do them all, obviously, because I'm not going to wear every single one. Um, I like this side, so I probably will do this one. I like that, too. That's just, to me, interesting, especially in real life, because you can see the circles up here on camera is not picking up and I like that kind of translucency look it gave and I also like this side so I may do this one and I might do this one maybe I might do these three we'll see so I'm going to get those UV resin and when that's done I'll be back and I'll show you how to drill the holes put our bales on and finish these guys up okay so they're all resin and out of the light and they got fingerprints on them, but that's okay. I will buff that off later. And I didn't resin this one yet. So I'm only going to drill two of them just because it's probably all I'm going to wear. But I have, I have more. Again, sorry, there's fingerprints on them. A little shimmer in there from the peacock pearl. See, it's very shimmery right there. And right there. So I drilled this one already. You can see the hole up there. And I'm going to drill this one. Now, I usually drill pretty close to the edge, and I know that makes some people nervous, but I drill close to the edge because I hate a big jump ring. So I try not to, I try to drill as close as I can to the edge. If it breaks, it breaks. It happens. Um, but I'm using a pretty good clay here, so I'm not overly worried. So this is my um, drilling, my hand drill here, or a pin drill it's called. It has a spinny base that I've showed you before, and that way you can put it right in your palm and you can just spin it in your fingers. You don't have to twist your hand. The way this one works is you just open and close this part here as your bits get bigger. Okay, so you untwist it, it gets wider. You twist it, it gets smaller. You put your bit in and you tighten it until it's locked. Okay, then we gotta find a spot where we wanna drill on this and try to find the center the best you can. 
So usually what I'll do is I'll kind of place it down and then make like a tick mark when I think I'm there and then I'll take a peek at it. You see that little mark? And then I'll kind of peek at it and make sure it looks good. I think that should be fine. And usually I drill flat down. Now I know that's hard for you to see when I do that, but I'm gonna do that just to get it going because it's easier for me to drill. And then because I resined on these, I resined the front, the back, and I did the sides, which I showed on another video a while back. Um, I think it was one of the alcohol ink videos. I'm going to go until I see the tip start to show up on the back. So let me, I want to hold it straight, so I need to hold it straight, and I'll show you what I mean. So do you see right there, you can see it kind of showing up? Then that's where I will begin. Instead of pushing all the way through because there's resin, I'm gonna start from the other side again. That way I have less risk of cracking my resin on this side. I'm gonna come from this side until I'm through. And then I'll just go through a couple times just to clean it up. Okay, so now we have a little hole, and then all I'm going to do is open it, and then go up my next size. Now I do go up through the sizes, so that way I don't risk breaking. I've seen some people go right from a small to a large, or right to a large. For me, I find there's more risk in cracking my piece, so I tend not to do that. Um, but that's, again, just me. Do this however you're comfortable. I'm going to go from one side most of the way through, and the same thing, come back out, flip it, go to the other side. Clean it up a couple times. So I know you can hear stuff in the background, that's my dogs chewing on their bone. Put my next one in. So normally if I have three of these to do, I would do the small bit on all of them, the next bit on all of them, and then I'd, I'd do them all. I wouldn't just change them out each, each time. For each one, but I already did one. And then I have um, that one's the next one. And again, I try to use as small as jump ring as I possibly can. That's just a personal preference. Um, someone asked me the other day if they could use an oval jump ring. I don't see why not. I've never used an oval jump ring but I don't see why not. Like I told them, go ahead and try it. Not like it, it can hurt at all. If you have oval jump rings, try it out and put it on and see if it looks okay. If it looks okay, then great. If not, take it off. I only lose a couple of seconds worth of putting it on and taking it off. And my largest size. Okay, this is as big as I go. I do have this pin drill on Amazon, my Amazon ambassador page as well. And it's not a very expensive one, but I've had it for about a year now and it works really well. Okay, so now that those are drilled out, I'm gonna start, so I have different size jump rings here. <clears throat> and I believe I have these on my Amazon as well. So I usually try to start with my smallest, which is a six millimeter. I generally try to get the smallest one I can in. But the problem is, is depending how thick your piece is, the jump ring's a circle, right? And your piece is gonna have to fit, the circle part's gonna have to fit through there. Meaning, if I take one of these, right? And I hold it up to the side of this, like, is that actually, is that curve actually wide enough for that to fit through? The six millimeter may not be on this one. But like on this skinny one, that curve would be totally wide enough to fit through, if that, if that makes sense. So we can try it, but I don't think it's gonna work. Um, these pliers, I love these pliers. These are my Beetalon bent, I think they're bent chain nose pliers. Um, I have these on my Amazon. I got them at Michael's and I loved them so much, I actually got a second one because I like the way they fit in my hand. They're not too big. Some of the other pliers I have are really, really big. I don't know where my second set is. I usually have two, but I only see one right now for some reason. So I guess I'll use one. 
So when you open a jump ring, you're going to open it front to back. You're not going to pull it apart. So you're going to open it by twisting front to back. Okay. Um, I also need to figure out what color I'm going to use with these. I generally do silver because I usually wear a lot of silver. But, or white gold. But I think with these, this kind of, this color might look good. This kind of brassy color. Actually, this hole's up here because I wanted the green at the bottom. So these, I mean, if you're looking for any of these, I only have a couple on Amazon. Mainly, I just search Etsy and eBay. So it's really going to be up to searching. I don't memorize everywhere I've bought them from over the years because I've been beating for a long time. Um, I don't memorize where I get all my stuff from. So, yeah, just search up bales. Okay, so let's see if this six millimeter will go through. No, I don't think it's going to. So let me close it back up by twisting again front to back and then let me put it away. Let me go to a seven millimeter. Is it that color? Yeah, that color. Again, twist front to back. And that one slides in okay. Put your bail on. And then twist again front to back and go past. Make sure you go past a little bit and they usually click in place. Now sometimes one's up taller than the other. Sometimes if that happens because they can't mass produce these all perfect, I'll just take my plier and squish it down. This is a thinner gauge wire, so it's a little easier to bend and distort. Okay, there's one. And I'll do the same thing with the other one. Let me get these out of my way quickly. Sorry if I bumped the camera. I did want to show it to you on the chain. So here's one side, and I'm not going to flip it, but someone could totally flip it and wear the other side easy enough because these bales are the same on both sides. So there's the long one, which this is the first time I've used this shape, and I, which is why I think I'm going to wear it. This is a broken chain right here that I just used to take photos on. And then here is the other one. So here's this side. Right. And the other side. Yes, I know there's fingerprints all over this. I gotta buff it up a little bit. Which usually I just take this wheel to it really quickly. I take pictures and get off all the fingerprints. I feel like when the resin's fresh, you get more fingerprints on it. So easy enough to make some pretty quick double-sided pennants. And you could totally do this on both sides, but I figured, why not have a stretched out side? You know, just give it slightly... I like this one that's stretched out. I'm not as thrilled with this side of it because it looks a little more torn but I do like this side you know so totally two way different looks from the seam veneer so anyways I did want to show you that really fast